no finger in front of the lens? Mm -mm. Okay, good. You ready, Jeff? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Teach me grappling. What's up, guys? Jeff's here to help me today. Um, today, I'm not going to show you guys really a technique. Um, well, I guess it is a technique. Um, I'm going to show you guys what to do when you choke someone out. <laughs> so what, what do you do when you choke somebody out? Somebody unconscious. So this is, uh, I don't think it's addressed that often. There probably are some videos. I have not researched what other people say. And I want to say again that I want to make sure I mention this. I am not a doctor. I am just a doctor of martial arts. So I am not a medical doctor. So of course, the medical people out there will probably have their own thing that they do. I'm going to show you guys what is commonly done in the martial arts. Now, what we do in the martial arts, I, I would just put money on it, is probably not advised by medical professionals. It may not be horrible, but it's, they, they probably have their own stuff. So if you guys are like a fireman or a paramedic or like a doctor, you guys might have other ideas. But I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna talk a little bit about history and about what we do in a jujitsu class when someone gets choked unconscious. It happens from time to time, okay. So, are you ready to get choked out? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's All do right. it. <laughs> I'm, guys, I'm not going to choke Jeff out today, but uh, we're going we're gonna to keep it safe. Now, I want to say this, okay? Just sit on your butt. Sit on your butt. Okay, guys, look. Ah, okay, so what happens when you get choked out? So, come here to the front. Uh, all right. So, you get, you kneel down. I, I get I get my elbow my my elbow all the way around his chin. I don't want to make a like a trachea windpipe choke. I want to get a nice blood choke. So when I get this here, and I'm gonna squeeze my elbows together. I'm gonna push with my chest and I'm gonna inhale to give a nice choke. I'm gonna make expand my chest. No, no. <laughs> you can tap, you can tap, you can tap. Bro. Uh, I thought we were pretending to no, like no, go no, out. No, 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 we're not gonna like pretend. Go. <laughs> not yet, not yet. But yeah. I'm talking about it, guys. Yeah. It's a very safe way to choke someone. But when I say safe, what I mean by that is you're not dead right now, right? Mm. So he ends up passing out. Okay, he ends up passing out. Uh, he goes to sleep. Okay, it usually takes anywhere between two and five seconds, typically. Okay, when a choke is proper, I don't even think it's longer than four when a choke is proper. Now, sometimes you'll get a slow choke. What I mean by that is maybe the, the arteries are, are just compressed enough where you limit oxygen and then it takes longer. It might take up to like eight, nine, 10 seconds to choke somebody out. Sometimes they're fighting and you know their body needs oxygen and then finally they, they go to sleep. At, any, at, at some point they go to sleep. Now what ends up happening is the first moment that they go to sleep, so let's just pretend. The first moment I choke them and then he goes to sleep. If I let him go right away, Okay, and I let him go right away, he may wake up on his own. You know what I'm saying? Like you might, you might like fall like this. Here, you choke me and I'll, I'll act. Cause I know how to act. I've, I've had this happen a million times. Okay, like sometimes he chokes me and let's say I don't tap, but then you discover that I'm out and I'll go like this, I'll go. I might seize a little bit. I might slur my speech. I might spit. I, I might, you know, choke a little, like, <coughs> and then I'll wake up and I'll go, what, ah, and you'll go, you were out. Say, you were out. You were out. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, sometimes guys are in denial and they're not fine, you know? So that happens. Then you have the next stage where you choke me long enough that, you know, the choke goes on. Choke, 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 choke. He's choking me, choking me. And then you go limp. No, but you hold it a little bit longer. The guy goes limp and then you discover he's out. Now, he's gonna sleep. Mm -hmm. He's gonna sleep and he's not gonna wake up on his own right away. He's probably most likely not going to seize up. Now this is most likely. I'm not saying he won't seize, but he's probably not, he's probably gonna be asleep and he may snore a little, okay? If we go to a third level where you choke someone really long, that's when we, let's just call it bad, dangerous. Guys can get seriously hurt. Death 
brain damage, all that. Now, what is that? I don't know. I've heard numbers before of, of seconds and minutes of where you get brain damage, but I, I don't think this is a true test that we can like, I don't think we know. I don't think the, the science community knows the answer to this because who's gonna do these tests? I know of a story of a guy, uh, a kid that was um, uh, doing like WWE stuff in the living room and he choked his uncle and he killed his uncle. And I believe if I remember correctly, I don't know this to be true, but I believe it was like 45 seconds, something like that, 40 seconds, maybe he was choking his uncle, which is an awfully long time, guys. And maybe his uncle wasn't in the best of health, or maybe he was, I don't know, but it, it killed him. Before that, we always thought brain damage happened at like a minute or something like that. But anyway, the experts out there, you probably know the answer, you can comment down below. All I'm gonna say, guys, is you don't wanna choke someone too long. It's obviously bad. But when you guys are on the street and you have to put somebody out, you don't wanna kill them, but you wanna choke them out and make sure that you're safe. What you do is you choke them out and you make sure you hold it at least a second or two long for them to be out. What I'm saying is you don't wanna be in a, in a fight, a real fight with a bad dude, some guy breaks in your house and you slap a rear naked on him. You don't wanna choke him and then the moment he goes unconscious, you let him go and you start to get up and he starts waking up and continues to fight you. That is possible, okay? So what I recommend you do is you choke him. Once you notice he's limp, give it another second or two, maybe three, okay? If you're really worried about your life, maybe four or five, but let him go, he will sleep. He will most likely sleep. I've seen it happen. Guys, I used to be a referee for jujitsu. So I have revived and, and witnessed people getting choked out many, many times, let alone in the room. In, I've choked, man, I can't even tell you how many people I've choked unconscious. It's probably, I probably choked 30 people unconscious in my life, probably 30 people. I know that might sound like a lot to some of you, um, but I've been training like over 26 years, so you can imagine. It happens from time to time. <laughs> if people don't tap, you know, and I watch, but the good news is I know what I'm doing. So I watch for them and when they pass out, I let them go and I wake them up and I take care of them. Okay, uh, sit down. So I, I tell you that, uh, I once was on a TV show called, uh, on VH1, uh, the, that music channel. There was a show called uh, uh, Tough Love. I was on Tough Love and did you ever see that episode? Mm. And I choked out one of my students on tough love. It was not planned. He actually planned it, but I didn't know he was planning it. I was showing his girlfriend how to do a rear naked choke and he held on and I choked him out. So anyway, I'm not going to do that to you. I squeezed, he went out and when he went out, guys, his head's going to hit the floor. I guided him down. So just go limp. Okay. You should guide the guy down on VH1. I actually kind of let his head hit a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now you're, you're asleep. Yeah. Okay. Now in the old days, this is what they used to do. I swear people used to do this. Okay. They would do this. Just you stay limp. Okay. <laughs> you getting angles on this? Come look at this. Look at this technique. Okay. They would put a knee in the person's back and move their shoulders back and forth and slap them and wake them up okay? and wake them up. Okay. This is not considered good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the medical field, they, they don't like it. <laughs> One more time. Um, the first person I ever choked out was my coach. I was doing, I was actually training the gi that day and I did a clock choke. It was right after Valiji Ishmael choked out uh, Hoist Gracie in that match back in the 90s. And I ended up doing the clock choke. I learned the clock choke from that match. And then I did it on my coach and I caught him and I choked him unconscious. The gi, by the way, chokes people unconscious much more than no gi chokes. Most no gi chokes uh, cause more pain and they don't cut off the circulation quite like, like a gi does. Anyway, you're out. This is common 
what we do, what we've have done in, in, in academies um, for a long, long period of time. Let your legs are limp. Good. So what they'll do is we lay them down on their back like this, nice and relaxed, okay? And then I basically lift his legs and I hold his legs up. You can move around. I mean, it's not behind me, just come around the front. Um, so once we do this, what it kind of does is it kind of lets, this is the, the rationale, okay? We're not moving his head, we're not moving his neck. So if he has a neck injury, we're not doing that. And then letting the blood from his legs kind of naturally just gravity kind of takes over. And this is the idea. This is what's been told to me, okay? I don't know that this is actually what's going on. I'm not a scientist. But it helps the blood get back. I might shake his legs a little bit. And then what I've learned over the years of doing this many, many times is when somebody wakes up, they wake up in a natural position. So, so he's in a very natural position. You know, you're laying down yeah. and I'm like, hey dude, you just got choked out. And you're like, really? What, what? You're kind of like disoriented, like what? And you might be feeling like numb in the fingers, in the, you know, in the fingertips, like you're getting your, your, your blood flow back. And so you might be feeling different. You don't know where you are. Sometimes you have a dream. So like, but when you wake up, you're in a natural position. If I were to go like this, hey, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Dude, when you wake up, you don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. And you're not in a natural sleeping position. When you're on your butt like that or on your knees, if I were to like, if you passed out face down yeah. and I started like lifting you up, hey, come on, wake up, get up, get up. Yeah. Dude, by the time he gets up, he starts stumbling. He doesn't know where he is. It's, it's, it's just a worse situation. So um, that's what I recommend. Again, I, I, I'm not sure what the medical field will say. They'll probably, in the comment section, you guys can let me know what you guys do. But this has commonly been done in a lot of martial arts schools, jujitsu schools specifically. Um, I think it's the best thing to do. Uh, it, it works. Yes, you could just keep them laying on their back and, and just kind of rub their, their chest or wait, you know, tap them a little bit, they'll eventually wake up. I one time woke up to uh, Scott DeWitt and he's like this. I, I was, just pretend you're on your back. Mm -hmm. He was like this. And I wake up, I wake up to that. And I see Scott DeWitt's face and I was like, oh my God, what is this guy doing on top of me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a little bit better to do it the way that I showed anyway. That's what, what I've done, and, and again, at jiu-jitsu tournaments, they may do something different nowadays, because I haven't been a referee in a while. They may have different protocol that they do. They might call over the trainer. You know, the world we live in, guys, it's all about like proper procedure. Um, this is maybe not the proper procedure, but this is what I've done in the past, since the 90s, um, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, please comment down below if you think this is bullshit and you think it's better to do something else, I would love to learn. I'm not an expert. I'm not a scientist on it. I'm just telling you as a person that's probably revived, you know, uh, I probably revived close to a hundred people from all the tournaments of guys getting choked out. So it happens when you're a referee for many, many years, people get, get choked out a lot. So what do you have to say, Jeff? There's, it's not very entertaining, yeah. I guess. You want to tell them the tiger bomb, the tiger bomb trick? Tiger bomb? No, yeah. no, 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 we're not going to do that. Hey guys, <laughs> don't, don't ask about the tiger bomb trick, guys. This is, yeah. this video, it's in, we got, we don't want this video flagged, all right? Um, guys, yeah. uh, thank you guys so much, <laughs> Teach Me Grappling Gravity. <laughs> if you learned something from this video, please click uh, like and share this video with others. We have the links down below in the description box for Patreon and PayPal. You can contribute to this channel while you guys are at home during this quarantine. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something from today's video and I'll be back for more with more great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>